Hey guys, welcome to Scotch for Dummies. I'm Sean, and today I'm going to be walking you through the entire Glenlivet lineup. It is part of our Four Dummies series. Uh, the Glenlivet has been around for a really long time. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit of the history of the distillery, where it came from, how it started. In 1774, Andrew Smith started a small distillery. He was a farmer, a lot of farmers back then, Distilleries was part of the game, so he started a small distillery, and uh, upon his passing, he bequeathed his distillery and his farm to his son, George, who is the hero of our story for today. Uh, so George was also a farmer. He ran his father's distillery, and in 1823, the Excise Act was enacted, and George was one of the first uh, distillers to go down and get a license to run a legal still. Now, part of the uh, reason that George was uh, so brave and bold to go do that was that his landlord, the Duke of Gordon, was one of the people that got the law passed. The Duke wanted to make some money off this illegal distilling operation. So, you know, you go, you get the license, and now you're going to be taxed on the liquor, but it's all legal. You can sell it to whoever you want. So the Duke sent around maybe some of his guys and encouraged his tenants to follow the law and go get a license to run a still instead of just being a smuggler and a legal distiller. Uh, well, that didn't sit very well with a lot of George's uh, friends and neighbors who ran the illicit distilling. And at this point, uh, you know, it's big business. So George carried two flintlock pistols everywhere he went to discourage his rivals from taking any action against him because in that time period, a lot of people's stills mysteriously burned down when they went to get a license. But apparently George wasn't having any of that and uh, everybody kind of knew it. So they left him alone or were forced to leave him alone. We're not sure which was the case. Uh, but the Glenlivet style was a little different than everybody else's, and everybody seemed to like it. It was lighter and fruitier than a lot of the contemporary uh, competitors, and it became very popular. Uh, so George, the business is going very well. He starts building a new larger distillery uh, in Minmore. Um, his original distillery burned down in 1858, and so it was good that he was building this new distillery because he didn't have the old one anymore. Um, when that distillery opened in 1859, it became the site of the Glenlivet, and it's still there to this day. Um, in 1881, George's grandson, George Smith Grant, sued a bunch of other distilleries that were using the Glenlivet name as part of their name. Um, and so there was a lot of legal wrangling and a compromise was made. This distillery is the Glenlivet, capital T, capital G. All the other distilleries that use Glenlivet in their name had to hyphenate. So it would be, you know, something hyphen Glenlivet. And a lot of those distillery brands kind of died out over the years. So now we're left with the Glenlivet, the original, right? And that's the basic starting point of Glenlivet. Let's talk a little bit about Glenlivet and their core range of liquor. They have a lot of bottles. They have had a long and prolific history of distilling. Um, so what we're going to focus on right now is bottles that are currently being produced and are readily available to most people for the most part. We may talk about a few that are specialty. All right. Right here, we've got their two NAS versions of their liquor. Uh, the first bottle is the Caribbean Reserve. It goes for about 37 to $40 a bottle, 40% ABV. This is an NAS whiskey. It's finished in X rum barrels, possibly sourced from Jamaica, uh, sweet and floral. A uh, little hint of rum, nothing over the top, but it's an entry-level bottle. Next up on their lineup, we've got their Founders Reserve. So this is kind of their real entry-level bottling. Uh, $32 for a bottle of Founders Reserve, 40% ABV again. Uh, this was released in 2014. This one will eventually replace their 12-year because of the popularity of whiskeys, brown spirits in general, 
Um, right now, it's getting harder and harder to keep up with demand for age statement whiskeys. And so this was the bottle that Glenn Levitt came up with to kind of ease out of some of that um, and ease some of the pressure on some of the higher end stuff. So the Founders Reserve will eventually take over the 12 year spot. Um, uses traditional casks, uh, first fill American oak. Um, so this is a very affordable entry level bottle for the Glen Limit lineup. Okay, so let's talk about some of the age statement versions of Glen Limit. The first up is their entry level. This was their entry level for a long time. Um, the Glen Limit 12 year old double cask. About $40 US, 40% 40 ABV. This is, as the label would suggest, a 12 year old scotch. This is a age statement scotch. Um, this one is gonna be starting to get phased out. So if you really enjoy the 12 year old and maybe you're not as fond of the uh, Founders Reserve, this is gonna be one that you're gonna wanna pick up a few bottles extra to keep on your shelf because this will eventually get phased out. Uh, so this is aged in American and European oak casks. So you're gonna get a little bit of the vanilla, you're gonna get a little bit of the spice. Um, just a, a real nice entry level for $40, 12 year old scotch. Next up on their lineup, we have the Glenlivet 14 year old cognac cask selection. About $55 US, 40% ABV again. This is a 14 year old. Uh, scotch aged in American and first fill sherry. So it's got a little bit of the sherry influence and then it's finished for six months in ex cognac casks. So that's gonna give it a little bit of a unique flavor profile. This was launched in the summer of 2019 and this one is a US exclusive bottle. On to the Glenlivet 15 year French Oak Reserve. Uh, this is a little bit more expensive. We're getting into the $70 range. Still again, 40% ABV, aged 12 years in ex bourbon barrels, and then another three years in French oak limousine casks. This, these are normally used in cognac production, but they weren't used for cognac production. They're just aged in these new casks. So French oak is gonna give you a little bit of that spicy quality. The ex bourbon, gonna give you a little bit of the vanilla. So you're gonna have a nice mix of both. 18 year Glenlivet. This one's getting a little bit more pricey. You're looking at $120, $130 for a bottle of Glenlivet 18. Uh, this one is done in first and second fill American oak and also in ex sherry casks. So they've got a little bit of both. You're gonna get a little of the sweetness. You're gonna get a little bit of the vanilla from the ex bourbon. On the top end of the age statement lineup, you've got the Glenlivet 21 year archive. Now we start getting into some money. This one is $245 US, but we do squeeze out a little bit more ABV, 43% ABV, American oak and ex sherry casks. It's a small batch production. So when you get a bottle of this, there are going to be subtle variations between batches. So you may like one batch, maybe a little more than the other, uh, but keep that in mind as you're going to purchase that everything is gonna be subtle variations between batch to batch. And then we finish with the Glenlivet 25 year, or if you like to speak uh, Roman numerals, XXV. Uh, this one gets real pricey, $425 US. It's 43% ABV, and again, this is a batch production. So you're going to get variations from batch to batch. This one's finished in Oloroso Sherry Butts, so it's gonna add a little bit of depth and complexity, but you're going to get some variation in that depending on which batch you buy. That was a, that was a lot, right? It's a lot to cover. But next up, we have some whiskeys that are exceptional. Uh, the Winchester Collection. So all of these are 50 year old bottlings. As you can imagine, they do not come cheap. They're all $25,000 a bottle. Um, they're all very, very limited releases, but I thought I would mention them. Um, the 1964 American Oak. Uh, this one was distilled on April 24th, 1964 by Captain Bill Smith Grant 
the last distilling descendant of George Smith. Uh, there was only a hundred bottles of that particular vintage released. So hence the you know exceptional price tag on that one. And then they kind of continued the Winchester series. Uh, they have a 1966 X Sherry cask, uh, again, $25,000 a bottle. So if you guys just want to peel off some Benjamins, uh, we can get you one of those. Uh, this was distilled in 1966 by former master distiller, Robert Arthur. It was aged 50 years. And again, only a hundred bottles of this were released. And then we have the uh, 1967 American Oak. This was also distilled in 1966 by Robert Arthur, uh, but they kind of upped the ante a little bit and released 150 bottles of this one. Still $25,000 a bottle. Kind of expensive, but if you've got that kind of money floating around and you want to try one, they're out there. If you don't have the $25,000, you know, bank roll to buy one of the Winchester series, the mystery series may be more of your range. Um, this series was produced with no other information other than ABV. It's kind of Glenlivet's take on a blind tasting challenge. Um, there's no tasting notes, there's no cask information, no age statements. This was a limited release uh, and it was paired up with some, some digital experiences depending on the bottling that you got uh, to just kind of play off of the fact that it was a mystery. So. We had the Glenlivet Code released in 2018. Uh, this bottle was based on the code breakers of World War II. It had an interactive web page uh, where you could kind of help try and break the code, the Enigma Code uh, from World War II. It's an NAS bottling um, and they didn't give you any information on this bottle when it was first released. So the goal of it was for you to taste the bottle and kind of build your own perception of what it was. And the website kind of gave you clues about things as you as you interacted with it. Um, and then at the end of 2018, they revealed you know a little more of the information so you kind of knew what you were getting. So NAS bottling, uh, aged in American oak and finished in ex-Canadian first fill rye barrels. And so it was just kind of a, a little bit of a different thing going on. And they continued the mystery series with the Enigma, uh, which was released in 2019. Both of these bottles were about 120 bucks when they were released. Um, the Enigma was based on a crossword puzzle. So you went online, you got clues to solve puzzle um, and, and to get more clues about what the bottle was based on. And then again, at the end of 2019, they revealed what was going on. So this one was an NAS bottling, Asian American Oak. And this one was again, finished in ex-Canadian first fill rye. So you got a little bit of information about it and then you just had to use your own perception. So kind of a marketing ploy, but actually kind of a cool thing to do um, to, to really get you to appreciate and pay attention to the whiskeys. I'm gonna pour myself a one and we're gonna talk a little bit about the Glenlivet Nadura. Um, this is a three bottle series. Nadura means natural in Gaelic. Um, the range uses traditional 19th century production methods. And what they're trying to do is create innovative, original whiskeys. They're small batch, so when you buy a, uh, an Adura, it's gonna tell you a couple of things. Um, the cask, so this one is uh, Oloroso finished cask. It's going to give you a batch number. This is OL0615, and it's gonna give you your ABV and, and some of that other things. Um, it'll tell you which uh, the bottling date. So this is uh, 615, and basically they're they're trying to get more craft into the distilling process with the Nadura range. They've got three different bottlings. They've got an Oloroso, um, and this is bottled at cask strength. So this particular bottle is 60.3% ABV. Uh, they do sell these in travel retail, and if you buy an Adura in travel retail, they are all standard 48% ABV. If you don't buy them in travel retail, you're going to get a cask strength. Um, so this Nadura on the end is a 16-year-old. This one is their natural uh, first fill edition. Um, so this one is 54.2% ABV, batch number 1111Q. Uh, they also have a Nadura peated 
and that one's going to be finished in ex peated whiskey casks. So they're not peating the whiskey, they're finishing it in ex peated casks, and then you're getting the final result. Again, that one is at cask strength. If you happen to get it in, in travel retail, you're gonna be looking at 48% ABV. Let's finish up our Glenlivet lineup with a discussion of travel retail. Uh, not everybody gets into travel retail. Glenlivet has a fairly extensive lineup on travel retail. Some of it is very, they mince words a little bit. So I'm gonna try and go through it so you guys can figure out what's going on. So they have a Master Distillers Reserve. This is a triple cask NAS whiskey, European and American oak, and ex sherry casks. That's kind of their standard issue entry level into travel retail. Then they go to the Master Distillers Reserve Solera Vatted. So same deal as the Master Distillers Reserve, but before they bottle it, they're pouring it into the Solera Vat to kind of combine everything together. And so they're pouring stuff into the top, they're taking out stuff at the bottom. So you're gonna get stuff that's a little bit older. It's gonna have a little bit different flavor profile, but it's, it's the same casks and the same production method that they're using on the Master Distillers Reserve. It's just a Solera vatting. So after the Solera vatted, we get to a couple of different like splitting hairs. So there's a Distillers Reserve that is triple cask matured. They have a Master Distillers Reserve small batch version, which is basically the same thing, but they're doing it in, in select batches. So there's a little bit of variation throughout the batch run. And so that one actually was the one that, that kind of caught my attention the most. Once we get through the travel range, we've got a couple of smaller options that you might see on the shelf and that I just wanted to touch on briefly. Uh, Glenlivet Spectra is a $135 US taster selection of three different bottlings. Uh, they're 200 milliliter bottlings, and this is kind of like the mystery series where they just want you to explore the different bottles They've got a little bit of different casking types. There's a little bit different flavor profiles, kind of like doing a blind tasting, and they give you a little bit of information on each. And then once you get through the Spectra, now we're onto the single cask range. Uh, right now, Glenlivet has six different uh, single cask ranges on their website. You may be able to find more out in the wild. There may be some extras, uh, but these are actually single cask Glenlivets. So, it has a cask number. They have a limited release of bottles. You're gonna see a wide range of prices on these, but, and they're not gonna be very common because of the limited number of bottles that you actually get out of a cask. So that's the Glenlivet. It's an awesome lineup. They've been doing it since 1775, back before it was even legal. Their current lineup, you've got NASs that start at a very reasonable price, down to $30 through their age statement lineups that take you through a wide array of different cask finishes and different age statements over to the Nadura where we've got some more traditional bottlings, higher ABVs, interesting stuff. Through the Mystery Series, the Winchester Series, they've got a little bit of something for everybody. So whether your budget is $30 or $25,000, Glenlivet probably has something for you. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Cheers.